There are very few ways that can be envisioned that have the capacity to end all life on Earth. Extinctions occur, but to wipe out all life from this planet is a tall order. Life, especially microbial, is very resilient. There are ideas like the gray goo, which in principle, if created, would involve molecular nanotechnology, self-replicating to the point that it consumes all biomass and basically everything else on Earth in order to make more copies of itself. This actually has a different term invented by Robert Freitas in regards to nanotechnology, echophagy, from a Greek term meaning eating the house. In this case, the nanotech is consuming its entire environment. Use of this term has grown beyond the dangers of nanotechnology, but the implications of it are rather frightening in the sense that if panspermia of a life form, a microbe, can occur, then there's no reason the same thing couldn't happen in principle with a nanotechnological self-replicator, and that the solution of the Fermi paradox is that we don't see alien civilizations because they all get consumed by someone else's escaped nanotech. This is not a great solution, however, because nothing seems to have eaten Earth's ecosystem in the last 4.2 billion year history of life on Earth. That's plenty of time for that to have happened. So if it is the case, then it's very situational and targeted, such as when a species becomes a threat, and such nanotech is used as a weapon that would be virtually undetectable until it hit. It, after all, would start with a very small number of microscopic machines. You'd only know after there was enough self-replication to notice, and by then, it would probably be too late. Another way to end all life on Earth is one that is virtually guaranteed. It is the increasing luminosity of the sun, and it will eventually get to the point that Earth will become so hot that its crust melts, and the one thing life on Earth cannot tolerate is too much heat. Oddly, however, there is a hypothetical biochemistry based on silicon, oxygen, and elements like aluminum that might actually be able to function with molten lava as the solvent. But we have no such life here on Earth, if indeed that really is possible. Yet another is strange matter. Matter made up entirely of quarks, which may or may not be present in the universe. We've never seen it that would convert normal matter into strange matter on contact, and in doing so completely eradicate all life on a planet, as the very nature of the matter the planet is made out of would change. But there may be another way to eradicate all life on a planet other than these options, and it has to do with a reality of the chemistry of life. All life on Earth is fundamentally made up of one type, molecular handedness and flipping that may represent a significant danger to life on a planet. This is the potential problem of creating mirror life. The idea goes like this. In the coming decades, it seems likely that we will figure out how to make what would amount to a new kind of life on Earth artificially. This life would fundamentally not be related to natural life on Earth, but would be something entirely of our own making. This would be above and beyond simply taking existing life on Earth and genetically tweaking it. Rather, this would be creating a mirror cell, where most molecules used in its creation would be mirror images of those of normal life. As an aside, there isn't any readily evident reason why life on Earth should not have also developed such cells naturally. It's a great mystery in biology. There are some newer ideas in biochemistry that suggest that opposite chirality, as this is termed, may face an uphill battle compared to our brand of life. But regardless, this type of life doesn't appear to have ever existed on Earth. But artificially doing so may have some serious advantages in the fields of pharmaceuticals and our own investigations of just how a biogenesis happened and what its constraints are. Chirality is often likened to handedness. A number of the molecules involved in life can be left-handed or right-handed. This is difficult to see in molecules, but the bottom line is that no matter how you orient a left-handed molecule, you can never get it to match an otherwise identical right-handed one. They are mirror images. In Earth life, DNA actually is right-handed, but proteins are all left-handed, and this arrangement has been so apparently since life began or close to it on Earth. This is a very sensitive arrangement. Start adding in too many left and right-handed molecules into the mix, 
and the whole functioning of life on Earth would be damaged. We don't know what the rules of the universe are on this, or what set it that way. It could originally just have been chance, and that opposite-handed life arrangements exist elsewhere in the universe. Or it may be that there are subtle differences in the chemistry of handedness that make it much harder to have the opposite arrangement on an inhabited planet. We have no idea. It could even be that the situation is such that abiogenesis produces both, but very early on our arrangement outcompeted the opposite arrangement to the point of its extinction. But if not, then this is where it gets scary, as a growing number of biologists working in synthetic biology and specialists in biosafety are sounding alarms, that it may be a terrible idea to create mirror image cells, and that if such a thing escaped, or was otherwise introduced into the environment, it could lead at least to a whole new type of infectious diseases, but might even get so out of hand as to cause extinctions even to the point of a total wiping of the slate of life on Earth, or even supplanting it with the new synthetic life. This is weird territory not well fleshed out in the world of concocting potential solutions to the Fermi Paradox, but the fact that we haven't ever seen or created mirror life, and we do not know its rules, opens up the possibility that it may behave such that it cannot evolve into complex life meaning that maybe that mirror life is stuck in a microbial state. That gets a little spooky. Sci-fi writers here is a freebie, as I have too many concepts to explore in my books as it is. But think about this. What if the creation of mirror life, artificially, is the great filter, and the solution to the Fermi Paradox is that civilizations, more often than not, blunder into microbial mirror life? only for that mirror life to cause the extinction of all life on that world, replacing it with mirror life that cannot evolve. I'm sure not all civilizations would do that, but it may be enough to explain the great silence to say that civilizations are rare, and those that do not develop slate wiper mirror pathogens are rare enough as to appear as a great silence. What has been done so far here on Earth are the creation of some mirror molecules in the lab, Right-handed proteins have been synthesized, for example, and left-handed building blocks of DNA have as well. Work done so far on going further with this seems to suggest that these kinds of opposite arrangements function just fine, opening the way for mirror life. Also happening is the artificial simplification of cells. Scientists can now remove the DNA from a cell in a bacterium and then replace it with a streamlined genome they either synthesized themselves or pared down from nature by removing the so-called junk DNA, leaving an organism that functions only on the instructions it needs to get by, and not the accumulated DNA that it no longer uses. Or so it's thought. This may not work with more complex organisms because it's not always clear what DNA actually is junk, DNA with no function, or DNA with a function that isn't readily clear but it is used. Work like this may lead to a time where an entirely synthetic programmed cell can be produced from no natural precursor at all, and this brings in mirror chemistry and mirror cells. Short term, this isn't likely, we're not that far down the road, but in a few decades it may be on the table. But when digging into this, a cell isn't the only thing that uses DNA, viruses do too, and it may be possible to create a mirror virus. Indeed it may be even easier than a mirror cell. But with a virus, there isn't a huge amount of danger because the only way a virus can replicate is by infecting a cell, basically hijacking it. And chirality plays a huge role here, meaning that a mirror virus almost certainly can't function inside a normal Earth cell. In a mirror cell, perhaps, but we don't have those on Earth, which actually gives us a way to potentially slow or stop an escape of actual artificial mirror cells as a kind of kill switch. Just make a mirror virus that can kill it if it becomes a problem, that shouldn't be able to do anything to the pre-existent life on Earth. Not an ideal situation, however. This gets into playing with nature in ways that we've never done before. That sort of thing does not have a history of going well. Oddly though, given that Earth life seems pretty clear in its chirality that actually creates the question of what happens if panspermia actually is a viable way to transport life across the universe. If an opposite-handed life form arrived here via meteorite, 
then maybe we should see it if that's ever happened. We don't. Nor do we see life genetically completely separate from normal life on Earth. Granted, with ideas like shadow biospheres and holes in our ability to detect odd microbial life on this world, on the table, maybe it is here and we aren't looking for it in the right way. It actually is possible to have alien microbes here that we aren't looking for and thus have not detected. Or there is something about life on Earth and its chirality that gives it an advantage and allows it to sterilize anything that gets here. Or in the case of a mirror virus, just completely ignores it until it just disappears due to non-viability. The other question, does this scale up? Could you create a mirror dolphin or a possum? That's way more complex than a bacterial species, so centuries further in the future, if there is even a reason to do so, or it's even possible, in practicality they may do it. At the same time, however, if nature can produce mirror life naturally, it very well may be able to evolve into a mirror alien civilization. If we ever ran across such a thing, it probably wouldn't be dangerous to interact with it. But we probably couldn't deal with eating each other's food, or at least expect any protein value from it. I mean elements, sure, but you get the picture. It's a cookbook, maybe more complicated than that. But the real question is, can a bacterium working on mirror life rules even be a pathogen to our type of life? And the fact is, it doesn't have to be that specialized, as it turns out. In a paper by K. Adamala and colleagues, link in the description below, they suggest that a mirror bacterium may not be as safe as one might think. Take the human immune system. It identifies foreign bacteria by locking onto molecules in their cell walls. And all of those molecules are chiral and our type of chemistry. That would mean that a mirror pathogen would not be recognized by the human immune system. That's problem one. But for the bacterium to thrive, it needs food inside of a human body. But some potential nutrients for such a thing in the body are non-chiral and could be consumed by it. This includes the amino acid glycine. While not packed with energy, it would be a food source and might allow a mirror bacterial pathogen to grow slowly with the body having no way to stop it. This is not unlike cancer, where the immune system just cannot get on top of uncontrolled cell growth. But if the mirror life pathogen were generalized and just looking for whatever nutrients it can find unopposed by an immune system, then any life on Earth could be in danger. It could infect and eventually kill a plant just as easily as a human by targeting non-chiral common nutrients. While this may not be a total planetary extinction event due to our medical science and the potentials to fight such a thing, think mirror antibiotics, but without the presence of human technology, one of these of extraterrestrial origin arriving here through panspermia could have caused extinction. But there are a lot of variations of what immune systems and life on Earth can do. What can eat a human may be food for another form of life on Earth. And our bacteria may provide some protection, as they too go after common nutrients of the mirror life. But I think the scariest thing is that if we can eventually create mirror life here on Earth in a lab, then unscrupulous actors might try to weaponize such a thing. But ultimately, this is a far-off technology at our stage of development. And it's also possible to equip altered or artificial life with a kill switch that requires it to self-destruct before it can do anything. But it is food for thought in that this is not something yet well thought about in speculative science fiction or anywhere else. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently concerned about the mirror possum. I'm not sure I've ever seen him look into a mirror. He seems to avoid them. Or he's not avoiding them and he simply doesn't have a reflection. Very disturbing. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.